I've never got any rounds. I've never really had any experience at all. And then next thing you know, I'm in there with, uh, you know, the first fight that I struggled was that I watched the French heavyweight champion after 17 fights, I'm actually pro. And no one really, no one really put any thought into that. Well, that takes some doing, really. So I beat him and then they put me with Jason Gavin, which was another hard night due to an experience. And then I'm in with Dylan White and Lewis Ortiz back to back. And, uh, and looking back, uh, I don't think there's many fighters in the world after 20 fights, amateur and pro could, could go 10 rounds, Dillian White, seven with Ortiz. And on top of the lack of experience, I've not even trained a day for Lewis Ortiz. I probably trained three times in, in five months after the White fight for Ortiz. I took him seven rounds. Um, it's night and day. In terms, in terms of fitness and in terms of everything else, training or whatever, night and day. I've been sparring in music. I'm in good shape. But in terms of experience, where I'm at as a fighter, I don't think, I don't think I've ever been better. You know, I, I genuinely don't. I think uh, I've still only had 35 fights in amateur and pro. People talk about Anthony Yard. He's only had 30, he's only had 40 fights in amateur and pro, and he's boxing Kovalev. I've been there with Ortiz. I've been there with Yoko. I've been there with all of them. And I think now the sparring of music brought me on again, uh, and the training with Jamie. I, I, I genuinely feel I'm a I'm a I'm a real top 20, top 20, top 25 heavyweight in the world right now. And uh, I'll show that Saturday, and I'll, and I'll show it beyond that as well. I've got a confidence about me now that that's only come with uh, sitting back, looking at my career, and saying, you know what, the stuff I've done with what, with what, with the experience I've got and the shape I've been is unbelievable. Did, did you kind of need that? Because obviously, after the price loss, you know, you were you were talking a bit about you know not going on with things, but did you need that sort of time to look back and appreciate what you've done and what you could I still think, do? Yeah, I think starting. My first amateur fight, 18 years of age, um, and having 10 of them, and then it, it was hard starting out. It was hard. I started, my first two fights, my pro career was six two minute rounds because my manager at the time was like, "You've got no experience, Dave. Like this is that. It's going to be hard to do anything." Um, in my sixth pro fight, I got a draw with a Bulgarian journeyman. You know, I was struggling. To, I've, I've always been a great athlete, but. Fighting in front of people and fighting in front, fighting in front of big crowds and stuff like that, it takes some getting used to. And you know, like I said, when I bought white, twenty fights in my whole career, it was it was daunting. The same with Ortiz. The worst thing, the one that inexperience I got was Lenroy Thomas fight, the first one, Bramble Lane. I really struggled with that because uh, that was fight twenty three, amateur and pro. I'm down there at Bramble Lane, the, my local football ground. It, it was scary stuff. Um, and I think after the prize fight, it took a while, and I thought the stuff I'm doing is unbelievable. There's no one—I don't think there's anyone else in boxing that has achieved the same things. You know, I've not been successful all the time, but the fighters I've been in with, and the rounds I managed to take them, and the Lucas Brown winning it with win, uh, I look back at it now, and I'm very proud of it. And I just thought, why not get in good shape, David, and have a go of it? Because there's got to be a bit of talent there, because. Pretty much everything I've done has just been on natural talent, really, uh, and, that's, and that's it. Uh, on your first-hand experience, uh, how good is Usyk? He's very good, yeah. Very good. Um, I can always tell when someone's good, because when I spar him, I will learn. I will literally, I can feel myself learning at the time. That's when, you know, I sparred Dirk Zora, and Dirk Zora hit me, and I thought, oh, God, that hurt. And it was shoving me, and I thought, oh, he's strong. But when I sparred Usyk and the likes of Fury, Usyk hits him with a straight left to the body. On the Monday, he move it. On the Wednesday, he move it. On the Friday, he move it. On the, on the second Monday, I hit him with a straight right hand to the body. And I looked at him, and I started laughing. And he started laughing. And he don't understand the word I'm saying, but I went, I got that from you. And he kind of looked at me and nodded, and I thought, God, this man is good. Because he even teaches him, he has to throw a straight right hand to the body. He must be good. So, um, so no, it was an amazing experience, an amazing fight, and maybe, maybe the best fighter I've ever shared the ring with my whole career, sparring, fighting, whatever. Um, he's unbelievable. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. See you soon, Thank mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thanks, Ron. Uh, next, if we pass over to Danny Flexen from Seconds Out. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Danny Flexen, what are you saying? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, all good. Thank you. Um, you said you learned a lot from Usyk. You could feel yourself learning while you were in there. Just give us a breakdown of some of the main things you learned from the sparring and how you see the main event going as well. I think within what it was is, I went over there with a the thought process of, I'm going there to learn. I'm going there to do what's best for me. I'm not going to there to be a punch bag because <laughs> that, that obviously is a spot, paid sparring partner. I'm there to please them. But I thought, no, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm not a kid anymore. I've been a sparring partner for Klitschko, Fiori, Joshua... 
and for the most part, I've been a paid punch bag. So, with the price fight experience behind me, how many miles I've got left on the clock, I'm not sure. I'm able to learn. So, I was boxing him. I was I was watching him shadow box. I was watching everything he did. And when I sparred him, all the things he was doing that was good. I was just trying to copy him. I'm not a southpaw, and I, and I can't move as good as him because I've got legs three times the size. So I've not got quite <laughs> the same movement. But I was copying. I was copying his movement. I was. I was. Um, everything he did, I tried. I'm not saying they came off. And when you're doing it against a man that good, it's impossible. And with the sparring, one thing I noticed from how good he was is when I um. I landed a really nice right uppercut on the second day of sparring. It was a beautiful shot. Up close. He's not great up close, I'll be honest with you. He's not, he's not a fantastic fire up close. As soon as I got up close, I had all the success I wanted, to be honest. If I could just get him to stand still for 12 rounds, I think I'd beat him. <laughs> but getting him to stand still is a different thing. I never hit him with that same shot again. I never hit him with the same shot twice. Um, I think with Derek, with the fight, I think Derek will struggle because... I think Derek's game plan will be let's just walk him down. He's a smaller man. He can't punch. He's not very strong. I'll walk him down. He'll be, he'll be very sorely mistaken because I don't think uh, Alexander's the strongest man in the world, the physically strongest. And I don't think, I don't think he takes the best knockout. He's the strongest uh, up at heavyweight. But if you walk straight on to Usyk, he'll knock you out. He, he caused me some severe trouble with his left hand. He hit, me, he hit me with a left hand on the chin and really steadied me up, to be honest. I've not been I've not been hit like that for for many many years. It really hurt me, and uh, didn't go over. though. didn't stop. <laughs> I said, "Come on, he hit me," and and I went, "Whoa!" Anyway, you're all right. I said, "Fucking am I all right?" I said, "Carry on what you did." Um, but no, he can punch. He can really punch because he's quick and he, he throws a he throws a left hand as he sets him. He throws it really wide. He, he he arcs it round, but it's not one of my right hands. You know when I arc the right hand like a cricket ball, I'm just thinking, "Fucking have this outside the pub." He's got a bit of fault to it, you know what I mean? He arcs it around, he's a great shot. So I think with Derek, I think Derek, uh, I give Derek six rounds to win this. I don't think he wins seven to 12 like a lot of people do. I think if he wins, he's got to be one to six. And just another thing, you've taken a bit of a social media hiatus. Um, I just wanted to ask you why you chose to do it and are we going to see you back anytime soon? Because Twitter's full of dickheads, that's why. <laughs> Top and bottom of it, it's full of pricks. But uh, I'm on Instagram. Instagram's a really nice audience. And you know me, yeah, I'm um, I'm into my childish jokes. <laughs> you know, I've got a bit of childish banter. I'm funny with it. Uh, I just want to make people laugh, you know, make them laugh, make them smile every day. And Twitter's not the audience for that. So I'm not bothered about Twitter. I'm not, I'm not bothered about social media, really. I, I go on there because I like to spread a bit of positivity and I enjoy doing it. Uh, but as far as Twitter's concerned, that's a no-go, but... I felt better for it. I don't need to read everyone's opinions about me. There's very few opinions I care about. Alexander Usyk and his team think I'm a good fight. Want me to stay a bit longer? That built my confidence. They know what they're on with. They want me to stay there and keep going. <laughs> I sparred three of the last four of the champions of the world. I've sparred them. Povetkin wants me in this camp. He's been ringing me on stop last couple of weeks to go over there. So they're the opinions I care about. I don't care about John from fucking his back bedroom. I couldn't give a fuck what he thinks because he ain't got a fucking clue. So uh, I'm happy taking the opinions of the, of the world class fighters over, over people on Twitter. But I like Instagram because it's a good audience and we have a good crack on there. Follow Dave on Instagram is the message. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Um, Ryan from Boxing Social. Do you want to jump in next, please? Go on, Ryan. Ed. Where are you? I'm here, mate. How are you doing? Hello. You right? Where's Tebbit? Tebbit's binned you off, mate. It's me today. That's what so, I was yesterday. I've only got a couple of questions for you, Dave, and then I'll, I'll let the other guys sort of get a word in with you. You've spoken about, you know, earlier in the career, sometimes maybe the occasion getting you a little bit. Yeah. You're taking your training seriously now. You've had some world-class sparring. There's a potential world ranking there for you. Does it feel like it's all coming together a bit now at this stage of your career? You know what? It was never the occasion because I'm not really, I'm not really one to get, I'm not a nervous guy, really, as you know. I'm not a nervous character. But, uh, you know, you know what comes with experience? I, I train fighters at home, as you know. I've got Danny Morales. I've had 50 amateur fights, right? I've got another kid, Liam, who's had five amateur fights. So they spar with each other. And in terms of athletic ability, Liam's a better athlete, yeah? Um, he can look after himself. He's a bit bigger than Danny. So for two rounds, it's always close. For some reason, in the third and the fourth, Liam's gone. Exhausted. And that's the experience. And that's what I've suffered with. I've been a great athlete, which I have. Underneath the underneath the fat, I was a top class uh, track and field. Uh, track, I was a good footballer, a lot any sport. But experience is key. 
uh, if you're not experienced with anything, you'll be knackered. If you're not, if I, I don't, I've not played football for a year. I couldn't go and play 90 minutes times, so I'd be knackered. Because that experience and, and the doing it over and over and over again, that, that, that's where you get, it's not fitness, it's stamina. I've not had boxing stamina, you know. It's not like being a fat bastard either. That's definitely not helped. The fitness. But uh, experience is key. So I think that's been the problem for me. And I think now that I've got, yeah, and you know what, I started to get a bit of experience. I've been doing the 10 with White, 10 with Yoka, 7 with Ortiz, 12 with Thomas. But I never had confidence in the experience, but now I do. Starting out, I go in the ring and I'll, I'll go, you know what, I've done 12 with Thomas, 10 with Yoka. I've done the rounds. This one's done one and two. So instead of bottling it, putting my hands up and just think I'm going to fucking fill you in eventually, I'm going to go, you know what, let's box. Because I'm a boxer, I have a 25 profile, I box for titles, I box world class men. Come on, Christopher, you big fat bastard. I will box your head clean in. And that is what we're going to do. And that's the confidence I've got now. I'm so confident. I'm an experienced pro. I suppose my dad the other day, my dad had 30 pro fights and he's talking to me. I said, listen, I've got 25 pro fights, yeah? I said, I'll box them all. Box them all. And he went, yeah, you're right. I said, well, why don't you just go out there and, and, and box like an experienced pro? I said, I, I said, I think I'm going to. So uh, I'm, I'm over the moon. With experience, has come a real, I've got a real confidence about me. We always say with heavyweights, you're only ever a couple big wins, a couple big wins away from it, a big fight. Uh, a world ranking comes with this, as I mentioned. You'll be number fifteen. How big an incentive is that for you, Dave, at this stage of your career? A world ranking. Well, I'm two fights with Joshua if I win Saturday night. You know what I mean? We're back there again. But uh, you know, the world ranking—that's what this fight is all about. Because to be honest, Lovejoy, we don't know anything about him. Uh, as always, people have been saying, "Why is Dave on pay per view again?" Every time I fight anybody. It captures the imagination. Again, everyone wants to watch me and Lovejoy now. If you look at the Instagram and you look online, don't look at Twitter, <laughs> don't look at YouTube comments, everywhere else, yeah. Everyone is buzzing for this. I think it's two big lumps, yeah. On the outside looking, it's two big lumps with big gobs and they're going to have, they're gonna have a go at it. They're going to have a go at it. So um, any fight, I mean, it, it, usually, it usually sells, it usually gets attention. Lovejoy says he's got 5,000 followers off the back of the fight being announced. I said, you're welcome. Um, but I'm really in an excitable mood. And, yeah, so I can't remember what the original question was. But, yeah, no, the top 15 ranking. Yeah. Am I going to be world heavyweight champion? Well, if you're in Joshua about, you're, going to, you're struggling to see it, really, aren't you? But there's no one we're getting a world ranking and getting some big fights. And, and I think, as I said earlier, I think right now as a city, I'm the top 20, 25 heavyweight in the world. And I think with a couple more wins, uh, I think I can be a legitimate top 15 man before my career is over. Only a couple more from me, Dave. You've gone from being the underdog, underdog against Christian Hammer to now being a significant favourite against an opponent we haven't really seen anything of. Has the mindset changed at all? Has anything changed? Well, you know, when I was watching Hammer, I was really nervous because Hammer's a really good fighter. Uh, I'm not saying Lovejoy's not, but Hammer's tried, tested, proven. He's, uh, it was a really hard night. I was going 10 rounds for definite. It would have been a real test of... Uh, this newfound confidence of my experience and doing it. I'd have to be on, I'd have to be on my A game and maybe that would not have been enough because I think Hammer's a real, Hammer's a real top 15 man. Like, I think he is, you know, if you're not, if you're not top five, top 10, I don't think you're beating him. Uh, and you're not even stopping him if you are at this point. So, um, love Joy, uh, he could be anything. There's a bit of trepidation because I'm sure he can punch. He can definitely punch. And I'm not stupid enough to think, you know what, I'll just watch straight through because he might not be very good because people online are saying that he's only been knocking out uh, useless fighters. But I'm not daft, you know, I'll go in, I'll have a look at him. And if he's no good, I'll, I'll, I'm pretty sure I'll take him out with no fuss whatsoever because people, as people say, Dave Allen's no good. Well, what I can tell you is if they're no good, they'll get took out in no, with no fuss at all. Uh, and if you know better than if you know better than decent, I'll beat you. So we'll just have to see Saturday night. I've, I've not got. I've, I know about as much about him as you do. All right, Dave. I'm going to pass you on to the other guys. Good luck with the fight and good luck with the new football manager save as well. Thank you very much. Well, two games undefeated as Milton Keynes boss. Anyway, thank you very much. Congratulations, Dave. Cheers, Ryan. Uh, Steve from Boxing UK. Steve, you want to jump in? Steve. Hello, Dave. Steve, how are you doing? I'm all right. How are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Look at that I'm beard. Well, right. yeah. Can you see me all right? Let's see. Good lad. Dave, new trainer. Yeah. New, new confidence. What can fans expect on Saturday that they won't have seen before from Dave Allen? 
Um, well, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't think much is going to really change. I don't think I'm going to change massively, really. Uh, but I think a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. It's the confidence. Um, I, I think I've always had, I think I've always had the uh, talent, always had the athletic ability, but I've never had the mindset with it. And I, and I, and I credit Jamie for a lot of that. Yeah, James gave me a lot of belief. Darren Barker, Darren Barker told me in the gym, you can be any of in the world, David, if you're on your top of your game and you go in there and you do everything correct. Um, and for this fight, you know what? It's not been perfect. Never it is. It won't be for, it was not for Christopher and it won't be for anyone else on the card. But uh, I've never felt as good as this. I've never felt as confident. I've never felt as physically good, mentally, or mentally in a better place. So I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon with it. I, can't, I just can't wait for Saturday. But man, that last time we spoke, Dave, you said, I promise I'll headline you two again. Yep. Being serious, mate. Now that it's four days out, this must, this must mean an awful lot to you. Yeah, I, I do think, I think this fight, uh, winning this fight, I think, could set me up to headline the O2 again. Gives me a world ranking. Uh, I'm blessed to have a massive following. Uh, I've headlined the O2 before. I think being in love, Joy, it's not about being Lovejoy. This is not about being Christopher Lovejoy. It's about being a number 15 Frank heavyweight with the WBA. That's what this fight is, you know. Um, I'm not overlooking Christopher Lovejoy at all because there's nobody in the world right now that is more wary of him than me. You know, other people will look and say, um, he's no good or whatever else. I'm looking at him thinking, I'm only looking at the positives of him. I don't look at negatives. If I just look at the positives, you know, because the negatives, will find. I've got the experience now where any negatives, I'll find them in the ring and I'll, and I'll expose them. But the positives are what I've got to look at. I know what I've got to worry about. So, um, so there's no overlooking him, but it's nice to be excited. And I'm excited. It's been a long time since I've been excited about boxing. So it's a great feeling. And, and this week, I'm going to really enjoy it. Good man. That's one for me. Uh, I interviewed Christopher on Sunday night and asked him for a yeah. prediction. And he said, no doubt he's going to knock you out in the second round. Yeah. I presume you don't agree. So how do you think the fight's going to go, mate? Well, if he knocks me out, the, if he knocks me out in the second round, I'll be amazed. Um, I think, I think it comes down to experience. You know, I'm sure this fellow with another 20, 30 fights now, as an amateur pro, it will be a different, will be a different uh, proposition altogether. But he's not, so um, be very, be very interesting. But I don't see any way that this man can beat me because uh, I don't think he's that good. You want rounds, or do you want to knock them out? I'm not bothering me. I'd be very surprised if this if this man um, stands up to me uh, uh, as soon as I eat him. I expect it to be over as soon as I eat him. In all honesty. Good man, Steve. Best luck on Saturday, mate. I'll speak to you. Thank you very much, Steve. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I think we've time for two more before we have to let Dave go. And um, if you pass over to Jonathan first, and then we'll finish with Charlie. Hey Dave, John here from Pro Boxing Fans. Hello, hey. John. You right, mate? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Um, when you went over to the Ukraine and sparred Usyk, how does it compare to the guys you've sparred in the past, your likes of Tyson Fury, Joshua Klitschko? I know you said he's probably the best you've been in, but what were, like, briefly the key differences? It, well, I don't like flying, for one. So when I sparred Joshua, I was 20-minute drive away. When I sparred Fury, an hour drive away. So I'm in Usyk, uh, it was a seven-hour trip with a three-hour flight, so I wasn't really best impressed with that. But uh, in terms of the boxing, if we're talking just purely boxing, the difference between Usyk and the other guys are he's not really an heavyweight. Um, for me as a fighter, what I struggle with is speed. I struggle with speed and good feet. If, you've got, if, you've got, if you're fast and you've got good feet, you're going to give me a lot of problems, to be honest. Because the way I fight, I fight like a... I was always taught, and I'd still try and fight, uh, like a fight from back in the 50s and 60s, slow feet. My hands aren't necessarily the fastest, but I tried. But I've got that style, so for me, U6 is a, a nightmare stylistically, which makes him seem to me better than the others. Uh, him and Fury, there's nothing between them. But the only difference is, is, the, is the size difference, you know? U6 moves like a middleweight, where Tyson moves like a light heavyweight. You know, they're both elite and they're both the two best fighters in the world. They could be the best pound for pound in the world. I'd put them two with Crawford, Lomachenko, Lopez and a few others. You know, Canelo, that's how good I believe them two are. Um, I think Usyk and Tyson 
a few level a few levels in terms of boxing ability in front of everybody else. Um, what you said, he, he just did everything so much neater than everybody else. He moved so much better than everybody else. His reflex was so much better than everybody else. But again, that comes down to the fact that he weighs four or five stone less than Tyson, three stone less than Anthony, uh, and a few stone less than the others. So with with that weight differential, which means he moves a little bit better, means he won't take a knock as good, which means he won't be as physically strong, uh, which means he's not as heavy-handed, even though he probably hurt me more than the others. Mm. So there's so many... Uh, there's so many different things, and you could ask someone else that's why all three, and he would probably deal with Usyk better than the other two because his style would, would be more suitable. So you could ask me who's the best, but you could you could ask another someone else, they give a totally different answer. But what I can say is, if we're talking about them three, he's talking about them three, the best heavyweights in the world. All three are absolutely unbelievable, um, but they're all very different in their in their own ways. And just sort of lastly, because I know there's a few other people waiting. Um, moving to Jamie Moore, Nigel Travis, that set up. What have you, in the brief time you've been there, I know you've been in Ukraine, haven't been there long, yeah. what have you learned the most? And secondly, you've always said you've performed in sparring with the guys we've mentioned, but you found it yeah. difficult on fight night to truly show that. Do you think under Jamie and Nigel, that's what's going to happen? I think the difference with Jay is what Jamie's done for me is just giving me confidence. I've got confidence. Usually, when I'm in any kind of fight, whether it be Nick Webb, Luis Ortiz, Dillian White, any, anyone, or a four-rounder against a junior at the start of my career, I would just panic. I would just say, I need, I, I need to get in there and I need to get rid of him ASAP because if I don't, I'm going to gas out. That's what I would think. I'd be scared to death. I've always just been... I've never been scared of not being good enough. I've never been scared of anything other than the fact that I just couldn't do the rounds and Jamie and Jamie's Jamie's just instilled so much confidence in me. I just feel like a different person. Not even boxing, just a person. Because I'm I've always been known to be very loud and brash, but really, I'm a very shy, quiet kid. Um and with the boxing it's been the same, you know. There's been a lot of hot air and blust there, but inside there's been so much doubt. And I think Saturday night I I'm I'm really hopeful. And for the first time in my career, I'm not even hopeful. I'm expecting that I will perform. Cheers, Dave. Thanks for speaking to Pro Boxing fans. All the best. Cheers, John. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, last but not least, we've got Charlie before we pass on to Tommy McCarthy. Charlie, do you want to jump in? All right, Dave. How are you, mate? Hello, oh, Charlie. You're right, mate. Yeah, all good. Thanks. Um, just one thing I want to pick up on. He's, uh, Crystal Lovejoy said on his Instagram live that he's going to weigh in at £350 for this fight. His last fight, he weighed, well, we can't take the weights out of Mexico too seriously, but 236. It could have been but 270. But let's say he's 100 pounds over. You say the person that's going to give you the most trouble is someone who's light, quick on their feet. This yeah. man, if he does come in at 350 pounds, is not going to be quick on his feet unless he's a freak of nature. What do you make of him coming in at that? Well, the heavier the better for me. Um, like you say, he's a big man. He's about 6'5". I don't believe he weighs 16 and a half stone since he was about 12. Um, but obviously, if he's 350, I don't think he's 350. I think he likes, he likes to play the game. Games. I'd be very surprised if he is. But it, the heavier, the better. I'm hoping he's, I'm hoping he's 450, you know. <laughs> uh, the, the slower, the better. Because I've always been a believer that anyone in the world that will stand with me, I will beat. Um, and someone that's done 21 rounds as a pro that weighs over 20 stone. I don't see how he gets out the first round with me, to be honest. And that's not, that's not me being overconfident. That's me looking at it for what it is. He's done 21 rounds. He's never been in with anybody, any, any good looking at his record. He doesn't, last, he doesn't last a round with me. I'd be very surprised. And if I don't stop him, you know, people say, oh, well, it'd be a good result if you beat him. If I don't stop him, then... I, I I don't deserve to be anywhere near the top 15. I don't deserve to be anywhere near the top 50 if I can't stop him. Because looking at it for what it is, he's a novice pro. All the pressure's on me and I don't mind it because I think he's way out of his depth. 